Hey everyone, in today's NFT marketing case study, we're going to be learning from the successful launch of the NFT project called Monkai that managed to make a whooping $850,000 on their mint. More specifically, we're going to be learning two marketing lessons from Monkai's NFT launch that are going to be helping you plan, strategize, and market whatever NFT project you are currently working on. My name is Leon Aboud. I'm the founder of Unfungible.xyz, an NFT strategic consulting and marketing agency aimed at helping NFT projects market their collection. What we specialize in is NFT marketing. So if you ever find yourself in need of extra NFT marketing help, feel free to reach out. It'll be my pleasure to find any way I can assist you, give you any tips, any tricks, and if you want to go that extra mile, you can learn how you can get involved with the agency. So feel free to book your free 30-minute consultation call by clicking on the link in the description of this video so we can take it from there. And one final thing, guys. Yes, I am an NFT nerd. I do spend my day uh, analyzing successful NFT marketing strategies or spend my day with client fulfillment, speaking with clients, helping them on their projects. But whenever I'm not doing that, I do try to be a human. I do try to do human things. I go to the gym. I meet people, I go out socializing. So if you want to see a bit more of the human side of Leon and not just the NFT nerd, then feel free to check out my social medias. You can check out my Twitter at Hey, this is Leon and my Instagram at Leon Aboud. With that said, let's get into the video. So there's two marketing principles that I really need you to take to learn from this case study. The NFT space is constantly moving. And if I were to tell you that right now is the toughest time to market an NFT project, Regardless of what chain you're on, this would be an understatement. The market is tough and only the strongest survive. And that's why the lessons, the tricks, the strategies that I'm really learning from successful projects, I aim to share with you, to equip you with most of the tools so you can increase your chances of succeeding at your NFT collection. Because trust me, I know, I've launched an NFT project. And I've been involved in over seven NFT projects, either marketing or consulting for them. And I know how much they cost launching projects. I know the effort and time that goes into them. So that's why I can't stress it enough. Absorb what's in this video, rewatch it, because this is going to save you a lot of mo time, money, and potential uh, pain from failure. With that said, the two things I want you to take away from Monkai's case study is, number one is the importance of creating novelty in the NFT space. It is so important, even crucial right now, to create something new in this NFT market that we're in. Just copy pasting what other projects are doing is no longer working. And creating a new experience, something new, something different in the NFT space is your key to success. The second thing I want you to take away from this video is more than ever, the power of connections is real in the NFT space. To succeed at a high level, like Monkai did, making over $850,000 off their mint, you need really solid connections. And we're going to see through this case study how they did it and how you can do it as well. So a quick overview of Monkai's project. So on Twitter, you can see Monkai is the first multi-chain NFT on Ethereum, Solana, and Nier. Uh, Sol was a 6,666 collection and they sold out at a mint price of 2.7 Solana. And they currently have 100,000 followers on Twitter. If we go to their Discord, we're going to see that they have 37,000 members, 6,000 of them are online. So pretty small Discord community, if you ask me. Right here, if we are on their OpenSea collection for Solana, they actually minted on the OpenSea launchpad. They were the very second project that was approved to launch on the OpenSea launchpad for Solana projects. So remember, novelty. They made over 13,000 Solana in secondary volume and have a current floor of 1.7. And if you go to their Ethereum listing, they have 1.8 thousand items um, with 20 Ethereum in traded volume and a current floor price of 0.08 Ethereum. And the fact that Solana performed a lot better than Ethereum really proves to show the current state of the market. Right now, there's no denial Ethereum is performing much better than Solana. There's a lot more volume, there's a lot more activity. Even if you go on Twitter and you see the difference between the activity that is happening on Ethereum versus Solana NFT Twitter, you're going to see a big difference. So the first lesson, creating something new novel within the NFT space. As we're going to see on Monkaiser's website, they built the first multi-chain NFT project. What does that mean? So a multi-chain 
project. Monkai is a multi-chain NFT experience where we combine Ethereum Solana along with community choices to bring forth innovative utility, community building, and an epic PVP metaverse. By obtaining a Monkai NFT collectible, you can participate in creating the Monkai anime, narrative, and access to and access the Monkai DAO utility. So if we scroll down very quickly to the roadmap, we're going to see the first stage of the roadmap is going to be to releasing breeding, staking token, and an anime, plus a Monkai Mint Pass. Then they're going to have a liquidity pool, in real life event, upgraded staking rewards. Then the third phase of the mint, they're going to have an anime, staking 2.0, trading post, famous token market, NFT minting pool, uh, a lot of promises, basically. So the mul so what are the multi-chain perks that they're talking about? So for Ethereum specifically, there's going to be breeding. If you own two or more Monkai NFTs, you can breed them to create a new unique Monkai NFT, which will allow holders to have a special uh, limited edition Monkai. Then they get prints. I'm not going to talk about prints. That's obvious. For Solana, you get re your reward holders. If holders own three or more Monkai NFTs, they will receive a free NFT from the Gen 3 Mint. You'd be able to, I bet you'll be excited for that one. And then staking. Holders will be able to stake their Monkai NFTs to gain Monkai token passively. And then very quickly, if we look at the team of Monkai, we are going to see Brains, the creator, lead developer, uh, award-winning visual effect, artist. Mata J. Bohm is the art director, is a concept artist and illustrator of VFXBrain.com. He specializes specializing in character design and storytelling. Then we got the community manager, Hyperstrike. Jay Simon, Hyperstrike, has vast experience managing Web3 communities in his work at the Soul Flowers as head community manager, as well as HR experience in corporate environment. So here's the interesting thing about Monkai. They built the first multi-chain NFT project. So they were novel. That allowed them, which is the second lesson we're going to be learning, to have really powerful connections, build really powerful connections, get listed on the open C marketplace, and finally convince buyers that this is a good buy. But the idea is honestly, I tried to look, I tried to do a lot of research to try to understand what do they mean by multi-chain NFT? What is the type of backend technology that they use for it to be multi-chain? Does it mean you can buy it on Solana and Ethereum at the same time and it's the same NFT? The answer is absolutely not. Basically, they, are the first NFT that just has two different collections. One is on Ethereum, one is on Solana, which honestly is completely like average. I would say there's absolutely nothing special with it other than they're making more money because they're on two chains. But the fact that they were able to brand themselves as the first multi-chain NFT projects, they were able to convince the market that they are new, they are novel. And most people are not gonna do the type of research that I've done for this video and really try to understand what does that mean? 90% of buyers are just buying into this because of FOMO. And I was honestly pretty disappointed myself. Like I was reading, I was trying to really find like, what did they mean by multi-chain? Like what is the technology behind that? And we're just realizing that they have two collections, uh, was a disappointment and seeing that they were able to pull it off, I guess good job to them, um, they did it. And even here, you can, and you can see this was a big part of their communication. They, everywhere they went, they said, we are the first, we are the first, we are the first. Right now, I'm looking at the first ever tweet made by Monkai, May 14th. Monkai is a multi-chain NFT project combining Ethereum and Solana, along with community building and other utility we will share soon. Ready to learn more. Any interaction with this tweet will be considered as early support. So really, they kept digging that in the market. We are the first at doing this. We are the first at doing this. We are the first at doing this. And this brings me to the idea, whatever you're doing that is first, doesn't need to be that revolutionary. In Monkai's case, as we saw, it was not revolutionary. It's not. So sometimes just finding ways to communicate whatever you're doing that is special, finding ways to communicate that to make it extra special. I have an example of a project that claimed that they were the first at doing something and how they profited from it. So Gothic Degens, for example, look at their description. Gothic Degen is bringing a new meta to the Solana ecosystem. And as you can see, they basically had a new genre of art, which was Gothic art. And the art absolutely looks great. You can see the floor uh, is at 11. They did a good job at building community. But there's a lot of projects that have really good art. But Gothic Degen branded themselves as the first at something. 
So this brings me to my principle. I know a lot of you right here are trying to build something new, something different. You're always looking at the market, seeing how you can create value to the market. And that's why it's super important for you, whatever it is you're trying to build, for you to make sure that you're, commu you're, you're communicating that correctly with the community. Because if you come in and the community sees that you're trying to build something new, even though it might not be the most innovative thing, trying to do something new, the community is going to reward you because the NFT community likes novelty and they like to feel like a project is pushing the industry forward. So if your art is unique, if your utility is unique, if the way you're doing things is unique, if the way you're marketing things is unique, put that first in your brand, put that front because people are going to reward you when you do that. So that was the first principle. We need novelty in the NFT space. And now for the second principle, and this is super important. I can't emphasize how important this is. Literally this week, we are Friday right now. Every day of the week, I've picked up the phone and I've called each and every single one of my clients and I've told them, listen guys, things have changed. The market is changing. Things are a bit tougher. This is what you need to do. And you need to focus on building connections in this space. And this right now example from Monkai really fortifies that. So if we go to the first tweet ever made by Monkai on May 14th, as we looked into it, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be going through the retweets, especially the first retweets that happened. And we're going to be seeing what is it that happened in the very early days of that tweet that kind of created that spark and led to 400 likes, 300 retweets, and led to the community to start to talk about them. So here we are, we are at the very first retweets that happened on Monkai's NFT. If you've been watching my videos, you've learned that there are three ways project pump the first tweet that they make and every tweet that comes after that. The first one is through paid Twitter marketing. The second one is through paid influencer retweets. And the third one is through connections and networking. Very early on, very quickly, looking at the very first retweets that happened here, I could see a common theme. People that were retweeting um, this tweet were all from within DAOs. They were part of, they were active NFT buyers, active NFT traders that are part of NFT communities. I'll give you a very simple example. Right here, we have uh, a holder from DGen DAO. Uh, we have a community manager. Right here, we have a holder of Meta Drago, one of the largest um, alpha groups in the Solana space. Right here, we have a Soul God holder. Right here, we have an Aneroverse holder. Right here, we have a Thug Dao. We have someone from Bohemian Art Fair. We have Cats on Crack holder. We have Syndicate Dao. Basically, you can see that the people right here are very well connected. And that means that this tweet that happened early on circulated within those Dao's. So what happened? I've seen this happen many times. We always try to do those with our clients. How can you make sure that your tweet circulates? Oh my God. <laughs> We're back. So how, how can you make sure that your tweet, your project circulates within those alpha groups within the Solana space? Because it is those people that are smart buyers. Those are the people that are going to talk to you about your project to their friends to the friends of their friends, and it's going to circulate. Because in the NFT space, word of mouth is the strongest marketing strategy. And I, I will assume that part of the success why these people were so well connected was because the community manager, as we can see right here, Hyperstrike, uh, according to his bio, has experience managing Web3 communities. And typically, community managers are the best connected people in the space. Let's continue going through their tweets find some key uh, moments that happened in the launch and continue just seeing how they were able to tap into their collabs, into their network to really uh, launch the project that was as successful as it was. So if we look, May 14th was the day of the first tweet. Two days after they started doing whitelist giveaways. That giveaway has 500 likes, 500 retweets and only 20 comments, which is surprising. So I guess here they, they didn't really emphasize on tag a friend. Um, I did check they didn't buy followers, so I did look at that. Um, May 17th, again, whitelist giveaway, another whitelist giveaway, um, big partnership. So right here, they've opened their Discord and they've started doing collab uh, partnerships. Just to show you what that looks like on Discord, to streamline the onboarding process of DAO collabs, we decided to use this Google form. If you match the requirements, we will contact the 
representative on Discord to make sure the process runs smoothly. This is way is this is way it's not needed anymore to open a ticket about DAO collab. And then the collab form, very classic. Which job do you want to whitelist from? Are you Solana, Ethereum, or near? How many Discord members do you have? How many holders do you have? What is your Twitter project link? How many whitelists do you want? Um, and are you guys open to do Twitter giveaways? So they were trying to emphasize on doing Twitter giveaways. And really, this is a classic position with an NFT project. There's always one or two collab managers on projects that their only job is to collaborate and coordinate with those projects because this turns into a full-time job very quickly. The project does a good job at opening their Discord and marketing their collection. They're going to find themselves very quickly with 300 to 500 collabs in the first day. So right here, they released a one-minute trailer. They used the, the Netflix logo. I don't know how legal that is. The quality of their trailer actually played a big part in their success. I remember one of my guys that I work very closely with uh, called me up and part of the conversation, he told me, hey man, did you check Monkai? You should do a case study about them. And then I told him, no, what, what is special about them? He told me, man, they, they released their uh, game teaser and it looks beautiful. And that's really what excited him. So the quality of the marketing creatives that you have is also something that is very important. And then very quickly, we can see that they started going all in on AMAs. AMAs right now is crucial in the current meta that we're in. Regular AMAs with other communities is incredibly important within this space. So right here, Monkai, they did an AMA with, with a Troll Town, which have 80k and they have their verified. And then you can see right here, they did another AMA with Metaplex. And then they did another AMA with Rogue Sharks, which have 50k followers. And then they did another AMA with NFT Thinks, big influencers in the space, 50k. And right here, they did an AMA with Pesky Penguins, which have 50k followers as well, big uh, project within the Solana ecosystem. And then they did a whitelist giveaway with Apelist, which is the official Board Ape Yacht Club giveaway page. And even they did an AMA with Apelist. Another AMA, that one was with Astro, 35,000 followers on Twitter. And then this leads us to the day of the mint, which happened on the OpenSea launchpad. You're probably wondering, how is it that they got those big collabs, those big partnerships with big AMAs? Number one, really being novel in this space, people are going to remember you, they are going to pay attention to you, and they are going to want to collaborate with you. Number two, being well-connected is going to boost that organic reach that you have, and it's gonna allow you to get in contact with all those pages. Last thing I do wanna show you is really the partnership they had with OpenSea. So as you can see, they minted on the OpenSea launchpad. So the notable drops right here. They were actually the second project to mint on the OpenSea launchpad. So I found and highlighted a couple of tweets from OpenSea really to show how much they pushed them. They helped them with the marketing. So right here on July the 18th, we can see um, OpenSea made a thread introducing the, Solan the OpenSea Solana launchpad. The first project was called the Zunis, which didn't do that well. But if you scroll down right here, they've announced Monkai uh, is a narrative-driven NFT project. By obtaining a Monkai NFT, individuals can participate in the creation of the Monkai anime narrative and access utility via Monkai DAO. Then two days before the mint, on July 24th, you can see that OpenSea did an entire thread about Monkai. And you look at that, 5,000 likes, 5,000 retweets, 2,500 comments. So a guest thread from Monkai about their upcoming drop on OpenSea's Solana launchpad. Right here, they're talking about the narrative-driven NFT project that brings forward innovative utility. 
And then the project founder is Joshua Kezer. Josh has years of award-winning experience in the film industry, working on blockbusters such as Arrivals and Passengers. Then the first collection launching is called Gen 1 Storytelling uh, and is based on the Edo period of Japan. And, the future of the, and then the future of this project is multi-chain. After Genesis, Jobs will release multi-chain token of the Ethereum collection that soon follows. And finally, uh, stay tuned. What kind of utility can you expect right after the Mint? Stay tuned for immediate token launch. Furthermore, just one week after Mint, we will release the single player version of the game. Our long-term aspiration is to build an anime franchise as we scale the Monkai brand. So OpenSea definitely played a big part in helping them sell out. And they were really able to get to the point they are at today because of the two principles we spoke about today. Number one, novelty trumps everything else. Number two, connections is your highway to success in the NFT space as we speak right now, August 2022. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope you learned a lot and that you are one step closer to successfully launching and marketing your NFT project. Again, don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Link is in the description of this video if you want to learn how we can help you and help your project. With that said, I'll be seeing you on the very next video. Ciao.